Good morning and welcome to Doing It Radio. I'm Patrick and joining me today is Carolyn. So Carolyn, recently you went to an event at the museum in downtown Kitchener. Tell me about that. Yeah, I went to an evening of question and answers with Sue Johansson to kick off their Sex Dialogue speaker series. That goes along with their Science of Sexuality exhibit. Awesome. So what was your favorite part of her Q&A? Um, I loved how funny Sue was. She was engaging. She was quick-witted. Um, she had a bunch of jokes and stories to tell us. I think if I had to pick my favorite part was her talking about the anal sphincter as a muscle and saying, that's why you can eat pork and beans and walk upstairs. It's risky, but you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you talk about sex can go a million different directions. Uh, was there anything that you think would have added to the Q&A or anything that you would have done differently? I had a couple pieces of beef that I would uh, change or do differently. Um, one thing that I definitely think we need to keep in mind when we're talking about sex and sexuality is to steer away from male-female language because it's very biologically based and it doesn't really represent a lot of the gender identities. Like, it leaves out a bunch of trans and gender variant identities that are always left out. That's yeah, definitely something we should be keeping in mind. Absolutely. And the fact that not all female-bodied people identify as female, not all male-bodied people identify as male. And tied to that, we have to be very careful that we don't assume the gender of the person asking us an anonymous question, because there's a bunch of assumptions that follow from that, like what their gender is, what parts they have, as well as what gender their partner is, and thus assuming their sexual orientation. And that kind of ties into my other piece of beef that I um, find largely discussions around sex and sexuality to be super heteronormative. Sexual health questions aren't just about hetero contact, and we're missing opportunities to answer real sex questions. So what I like to do is use if-then statements. So if I don't know, for example, who has written me a question about performing oral sex, I can answer my question if you're performing oral sex on someone with a vulva, here's what you can do to protect yourself. If you're performing oral sex on someone with a penis, and that way there's more information for everyone and you're not making any assumptions. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then another thing that I think we really need to be mindful of is around uh, discussions about anal sex. The first thing out of our mouth can't be that's high-risk behavior because that makes it sound like it's a gateway activity to cat burglary or something like that. And it's really a stigmatizing language to use. So instead, we can take a more positive, affirming approach um, and say, like, these are things that are important when you're talking about anal sex or intercourse. You need to think about communication, warming up because the rectal mucous membrane is thinner and more prone to tearing. Um, talk about lube and condoms and only doing what you want to do and making sure that all partners are communicating and consenting. Um, instead of saying, you know, I'm really worried or framing anal sex as a discussion around what guys want from their girlfriends, because I think that's, that's generalizing, that's stigmatizing, and it's totally not acknowledging the pleasure that people can receive from anal intercourse. It kind of seems like you're really approaching a topic of diversity here. Absolutely. I think there's a huge spectrum of identities, a spectrum of what different relationships look like, and we're not all going to be the same. If we were, it'd be really friggin' boring. All right, do you have any last thoughts for our listeners? As long as you're doing what you like with someone you like, and they like it too, you're doing great. And if you have any questions for us at Doing It, you can go to doingit.ca, D-O-I-N-I-T dot C-A, and click on the green Ask Your Question link, and that'll send us some anonymous questions that we can answer in a very affirming, positive, sex-positive, um, inclusive way. Awesome. So that concludes our segment for today. So thanks for listening to Doing It Radio. I'm Patrick here with Carolyn, and stay safer, listeners.